in South Africa and a very warm welcome to you. My name is Balisa Dembe and this is your Monday edition of Afternoon Express. As we usher in a new season and ushering in a new month, we are of course entering this week with absolute style as we chat to Zuri Hall about the 78th annual Golden Globe Awards. And of course from overseas runways to our runways right here in Mzanti, we're going to be touching base with Gavin Raja as we discuss the AFI fashion. And yes, Mzanti, we're still giving away that chink. So later on in the show, we will be giving away week two's 5,000 Rand prize with Emuenza. But from me here, Domi, how are you doing in the kitchen? How are you, Bali? I'm doing quite well. And we've also decided to bring something back. We are bringing Meat Free Mondays back because today we are making mini Cooking Monster pizzas with our Fries family. To get all the recipe details, all you need to do is go to afternoonexpress.co.za for the full ingredients list. But back to you and Zuri, Bali. <laughs> Sounds delicious to me, thank you. But kicking it all off this Monday, Mzansi, today we have one of the brightest starlets lighting up Hollywood at the moment. I'm talking about none other than Zuri Hall. She chats to us all about the glitz and glam fashion at the 78th Annual Golden Globe Awards. And also she'll be sharing more about her podcast. Zuri, welcome to the show. Hello, Polly. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. First of all, girl, I'm excited because number one, we are key keying over all the fashion and entertainment <laughs> that went down at the Golden Globes. And secondly, South Africa, Zuri knows my name. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, I know your name and I love your work. And I'm just so grateful uh, to be able to share space with you and get to talk a little bit today. So thank you. OK, well, as we just reveling on all this excitement, I just want to find out from you. How excited were you then yet again to be invited to pre-host the Golden Globes? Yeah, I was so excited. It was really a blessing. I love these carpets. I love award season. It's my favorite time of year. This is my, I think, fifth award season, maybe sixth. I can't remember. That's how old <laughs> I'm getting. But um, it's been really fun. This was obviously a different year. I was hosting the official countdown show for the Golden Globes. And, you know, we were virtual for certain parts of it. But then we actually had a lot of the celebrities who were in person in Los Angeles at the Beverly Hilton and also in New York. Um, um, so it was fun to just see people. Um, there I am. Yep, this was my look last night. Um, <laughs> absolutely loved it. Decided to go a little more fresh, fun, and, and light. Um, not as traditionally glamorous as, as I might. Uh, Cynthia Erivo was one of my other favorites when it came to the fashion. Yeah. And Jane Fonda, who actually received what you're seeing there, the Cecil B. DeMille Award. Such an amazing legacy. And fun fact, she actually wore something that she's worn before. She teased and told us, you know, I'm going to wear something that you've seen on the carpet before so i absolutely love that you know at her age with her style and her grace she's like if i wear it <laughs> once i'll wear it again and i'll look good both times hallelujah honey listen that is what i'm all about and i love that about certain celebrities which leads me then to the question how then do you think that the pandemic affected mm -hmm. fashion number one you had a virtual showcase a virtual you know fashion show and number two we're seeing um starlets just like that upcycling upcycling old looks yeah, you're, you're so right about that. People are definitely using old looks again. People are definitely wearing pajamas on the bottom, not unlike <laughs> myself right now. Um, what was most different about the Golden Globes this year is we had Tina Fey and Amy Poehler hosting again, which we've seen before and we love. They're yeah. such a dynamic duo. They're best friends. They're so much fun. But this time they were doing it bi-coastally. So Tina Fey was based in New York City. Amy was based in LA. And they sort of did this video chat thing, not unlike all of us around the world with our friends colleagues and family members um, and so it worked pretty well there were a few technical difficulties at times sometimes the banter can feel a little bit awkward if you know you have a bit of a delay or someone's having tech issues at home and of course many of the celebrities were giving their acceptance speeches from home mm -hmm. um, Daniel Kaluuya won um, for his role in Judas and the Black Messiah and there were some technical difficulties so he almost didn't get to make his acceptance speech on air at least uh, but they, they figured it out so we certainly had some close those calls but overall it was an exciting night Jeez, you know, the drama of it all. I feel like I'm right there within the action, in the thick of it, <laughs> touching base with you, Zuri. Yeah. So, like Tina and Amy might be besties, girlfriend, you and I are besties from now on. So, I want to find out yes. from you then, Zuri. You know, with the High Five Queen, with so many incredible talents, though, coming out of Hollywood at the moment, who were you most looking forward to talking to this year? And, girl, did you have any predictions when it comes to the wins? 
Yeah, um, honestly, I was most excited to see um, Andra Day win. I just really wanted her to win for the United States versus Billie Holiday. Billie Holiday obviously being an, an iconic um, Black artist, especially for her time. Mm. And Andra actually talked about the fact that she was nervous. She didn't want the part. She was like, please, God, take the part away from me. She said she gave that prayer so that she didn't have to disappoint anyone by passing on the role, but also didn't have to deal with the burden and pressure of taking it on. Yeah. Well, she took it on. She absolutely killed her performance. So beautifully done. And she won the Golden Globe for it. So that was a really exciting moment for me. Also, obviously, I was rooting for the late Chadwick Boseman. He was the sweetest guy. I've had the pleasure of talking to him often um, on red carpet through the years. And his his beautiful wife um, actually gave the acceptance speech on his behalf, uh, which was very, very sweet and touching. And I'm sure there wasn't a dry house uh, or dry eye in the house, yeah. technically and quite literally, or in the house at the actual award ceremony. So it was really great to see him win. Mm. Well, Zuri, you know, for people like us here, all the way in Zanzi in South Africa, it's people like Chad it's people like yourself that truly do stand out to the rest of us as those you know that are of color black loud and proud but are honestly walking the talk on that big stage of hollywood so girlfriend we're definitely taking notes and as we do turn our attention more to yourself and the work that you do i want to find out from you zuri how has the pandemic impacted you and i know when it comes to your career we are certainly looking forward to that podcast um hot happiness yeah. right <laughs> Yes, yes, that's right. The pandemic has affected me the same way it's affected other people, you know, I'm no different. It's made it um, a little bit difficult and certainly isolating at the start of last year, you know, as we all sort of went into this new normal. I'm just thankful for my health and my safety. So I have no complaints at all. Um, it's been a blessing to stay safe and healthy in such, you know, difficult and trying times. It has definitely changed the way we do work. I thought that we would be doing less celebrity interviews, but the truth is, I feel like I'm working more than ever in the best <laughs> way. And what's interesting is because these celebrities are in their homes now, um, they're calling us and they're comfortable. They're willing to talk on Zoom for longer. You know, I had an interview with Taraji P. Hinton at the start of the pandemic, and I felt like you. I was like, I feel like I'm just talking to my girlfriend on yes. the phone right now. You know, we had our little Zoom set up and we were just laughing and kiki and for much longer than we would if it was an in-person interview because it kind of makes you feel a little bit more familiar. Um, so work is busier than ever. That's a blessing. I just launched my podcast, Hot Happy Mess, uh, in partnership with iHeartRadio and my friend Charlemagne the God's new podcast network called the Black Effect Network. Yeah. Bonang actually has a podcast coming also yeah. uh, via this partnership. And I'm really excited about it. It's all about best life minus the burnout, how to find the magic in the middle of our messes, uh, particularly for Gen Zers and millennial women. Um, and what's really exciting is I'm highlighting real women's stories. Mm -hmm. I'll talk to some of your favorite celebs, but more than anything, this is a different space for us to talk about our everyday lives, relationships, dating, family, motherhood, team no kids. And I don't just want to highlight American stories. I'm also planning to, I don't, I can't give away too much yet, but I'm planning to highlight the stories of real women in South Africa. Also, um, a couple other countries, because I really feel like we're stronger together. We have so much to learn from one another mm -hmm. and also more in common than I think we realize. Um, and at the end of the day, that's being a woman in a modern world. And so I'm excited to have those conversations. Yeah. Um, with South Africa, with the States, uh, globally. That's the beauty of podcasting. I love that. I mean, Zuri, you've already mentioned some of our faves. Charlemagne the God and, of course, Monanga. Sometimes I see that bent on social media going back and forth. And, of you course, know. then enters oh, Zuri <laughs> It's all. That's what it's all about. We're all there sitting with our pop conscious. Okay, you saw that hashtag. But then um, another thing about you, though, is that some, there's something about South Africa that keeps you coming back, whether it's starlets yeah. as well side by side with you, like Abo Bonang, and of course, just the average South African woman. What is it about our country yeah. that just speaks to you? Honestly, I will never forget the first time that I landed there. At the time, I was the face of E! News. Um, I was doing yeah. promotion for um, E! Africa, and I was welcomed so warmly and truly and genuinely. And I'm from Ohio, and that's in the Midwest in America. And it felt similar to that in a really good way. You know, everyone was so kind and generous with their time. And, you know, th there's a steep learning curve sometimes. My yeah. pronunciation isn't always the best, but I'm trying. And so everyone, 
God is, you know, really gracious with schooling me and showing me uh, the country. I'll never forget the first sunset that I saw in South Africa. Mm. I honestly almost cried. Um, the the rich fashion, the, the boldness of color and texture. Um, I just love the way that South Africans interpret fashion particularly. And we've started to see a little bit more of that on Hollywood red carpets too, yeah. um, which is a sign of the times. And it's exciting because there's so many amazing South African designers. So to start to see um, those trends and those colors and patterns sort of infiltrate LA based and New York based carpets is really exciting too. So wow. I just love the country. I love the food. <laughs> The food is so good, and I can't you. wait to get back. No, listen, we can't wait to have you back. And girl, don't worry, we saw that Emmy sitting there just um, oh, hovering oh. on your shoulder. So here I is two. Yulili, Yulili, Yulili. In South Africa, we Yulili. Yulili, Yulili. Oh, girl, here is two <laughs> more awards. Here is to us just key keying over fashion and so much more. I know yeah. you spoke about South African designers, and we've got one of our favorites, Gavin Raja, coming up at the end of the show. So I hope you stay tuned to Afternoon Express. Now on social media, as we're bidding Zuri farewell, we're saying it's officially a new month, the month of March, and of course it's also autumn. So what's the one thing that you want to make a change to this season? Make sure you use that hashtag Afternoon Express in all of your comments. Coming up though, we discuss what are the long-term health effects of COVID-19 with Immuenza. While most that have experienced COVID-19 recover and return to normal health, some patients can experience post-infection symptoms that can last for weeks or even months. We chat to Dr. Emil Reed about the long-term health effects of COVID-19 and of course, how this can affect the body. We also have Nicole Austin joining us back in the loft, girlfriend, Hi, as Annie. our health correspondent. It's been so valuable having you in these chats. 
It's so great to be here and speaking again to Dr. Emil Reed on something that is so critical for how we move forward from the long-term complications of COVID. Yeah, and that's where you come in, Dr. Emil. I mean, after experiencing acute symptoms from COVID-19 and recovering from these symptoms, it has been reported that some individuals experience some post-infection symptoms or even long-term health effects. So why does this happen and how common is it? We, we call that phenomena long COVID or the people that actually suffer from it, COVID long haulers. And what it means is the following. Those people get COVID infection, whether mild or severe, the symptoms complex actually continues outside the frame, which is normally perceived as being normal. And that normally is around about two weeks. But in many cases, when it comes to long COVID, can persist for two to three months. And I've seen cases where it persists for six to almost 12 months. I've indicated to you also that the majority of patients admitted to our high care and ICU are indeed men. In this case, however, with long COVID, 78% of patients suffering from long COVID are in fact women. That's fascinating. And doctor, I wanted to know from you, age seems to be a big hot topic in COVID-19. Are younger people and children more likely to recover faster with fewer long-term side effects? You know, Nicole, youngsters, including children, are expected to sometimes even be more asymptomatic and should they acquire COVID, actually become better much sooner. The majority of long haulers falls in the category of high risk people and, and therefore they, as they get older, also have a higher risk in becoming a long hauler. What are some of these long term reported symptoms that people have been experiencing and do these simply tend to go away with time? Well, those sim symptoms frequently encountered when it comes to long COVID includes chronic debilitating fatigue, loss of taste, loss of smell, persistent headaches, dry cough, intermittent shortness of breath, yeah. so-called brain fog where people feel that their concentration is not good, they're not as sharp as they should be, and, and even depression, depression, difficulty in sleeping, atypical chest pain and joint aches. And, and usually they tend to go away at some stage, but that timeline varies between different individuals, whether it's two months, six months, or even a year. Now, doctor, you've alluded to some of these serious long-term complications already, but are there some specific severe symptoms that people need to be aware of that can cause serious complications? That, that's an absolute fantastic question, Nicole, because usually during the time uh, that we've entered now where there's a lull in COVID cases, we frequently see a number of medical long-term complications in people who actually already had COVID, which might be extremely serious. And it includes the following. Cardiovascularly, we see people develop heart attacks. We see people developing inflammation of the heart muscle called a myocarditis. When it comes to the lungs, people can develop an entity called lung fibrosis which means that there is hardening of the lung, which causes severe chronic debilitation uh, after having suffered severe COVID pneumonia. Patients also develop kidney problems, acute chronic renal failure, and also skin conditions, which includes certain rashes or marks, hair loss, and thinning of both the hair and the skin. Neurologically wise, smell, taste, concentration, memory issues are probably not so complicated. All of these chronic conditions have a massive impact on people's lives. People have already lost their jobs, lose their income, and they cannot perform their daily tasks. 
Well, Doctor, you know, this seems so very scary right now, especially those that are hearing this and have experienced COVID. What should we be doing after experiencing COVID-19 to avoid or recover from any long-term health effects? Well, as, as discussed, COVID can infect and affect many different parts of our body. The ongoing pandemic and other events are massive stresses and are clearly adding to our misery that we experience. The following people can probably look at. Number one, if you're exhausted, find out how much sleep you're actually getting and where the problem lies, whether it's in initiating sleep, whether it is maintaining sleep that needs to be addressed. We really don't understand how the symptoms of malaise actually work, but know it's prudent to use extreme caution, especially when running and exercise, which is ne necessary but not easy to do, especially after COVID. If we are going to exercise, it's important, but we need to take it one step at a, at a time. Eat healthy, avoid alcohol, avoid cigarette smoking. And, and the other thing I need to address is anxiety is a real issue. And, I, and it's important for people to understand that should they need to speak to somebody a psychologist or a psychiatrist, there's absolutely no shame in that. Mm, absolutely. Lastly, mm. please consult your doctor if you experience trouble breathing, if you experience chest pain, rapid weight loss or weight gain, diarrhea, blood correctum, heartburn, reflux, and you feel on a daily basis you cannot stay awake. Yeah, okay, well, we heard you loud and clear, Doc. It seems like the rules stay the same. Nothing's changed. We need to have a little bit more self-care and self-love, it seems, Doctor. I think we all need to be more self-aware and take care of ourselves. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. Emil. Goodbye. Super. Do you have a survival story? Then we want to hear from you. Share your survival story with us from surviving a failed parachute to escaping a lion attack. We want to hear your story. Immuenza is giving away 5,000 rand a week for five weeks. All you have to do is reply to the Immuenza competition post on the Afternoon Express Facebook page or Twitter page and tell us your survival story and what protected you using the hashtag Immuenza. Competition closes on the 3rd of March, 2021 at midnight. And terms and conditions can be found on afternoonexpress.co.za. Help support your immune system for your next big adventure with Immuenza. Now, Nicole, I do love a good Monday. Guess why? Mommy Monday? I guess, suppose, no, but no, not today. Okay, why? Because we're giving away money! Of course! <laughs> and today is competition winner day. Yep, absolutely. We are giving away our second winner of that 5,000 Rand prize today, later on in the show. So I'm very much looking forward to that. I'm loving hearing all of these incredible survival stories of South Africans that are just regular, ordinary South Africans, but achieving and doing the most. I love it all. And then also coming up, we're in the kitchen with Chef Domi. I'll be strong.
Five. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now it's finally that time where we find out who the lucky winner is of this week's Imuenza competition. Each week Imuenza is giving away 5,000 Rand cash for five weeks. And all you need to do is reply to the Imuenza competition post on the Facebook or Twitter page telling us your survival story and what protected you. From a failed parachute to escaping a line attack, we want to hear your stories. Well, Let's not wait another second. Here it is. Are you ready? Drum roll, please. And the lucky winner is Melissa September. Woo! and share the good news. Melissa, well done on being this week's winner of the Emu Windsor competition. How do you feel, Melissa? Thank you very much. I feel so overwhelmed right now. Now, Melissa, you had quite a traumatic and I can only imagine experience you as growing, a, growing up as a kid. So can you just tell us that story of baby Melissa and some of the adversities you've had to overcome? Okay, so basically myself and uh, my best friend, um, we had a play date after school. That was in 1997, November to be exact. Um, we had a play date in the park just nearby. Um, we were playing and the more hikes we got, I realized that there was actually someone watching over us and then um, it didn't look too good. I then called out to her and I said, come, let's go, Anastasia. But then um, she wasn't taking that much note. By the time she really looked up, she was grabbed and she oh. was taken, driven away in, in the car. And I remember that day like it was yesterday. How horrific. What an experience that must have been. Um, what protected you? And how did you get out of that situation? The, the park we were in was um, like a nearby community park. So our house wasn't too far. I sped off, ran. Mm. By the time I got home, the car was still passing in a full speed past me. All I could tell my grandfather was he took her, I was too traumatized to say anything else. And the neighbors were still saying, we just saw that car yeah. speeding through out of the area. Mm. Well, Melissa, please tell us that the story ended on a good note. Was your friend ever found? She was never found 24 mm. years now and nobody, no sign, nothing. Well, the truth, Melissa and uh, Nicole, is that this is the story that so many South Africans can identify with, yes. unfortunately. And that is just the reality. But I love the fact that um, we're speaking about it today on platforms like these to raise awareness so that every little girl and boy out there can be very vigilant of their surroundings, be very vigilant as to who's walking around you and how safe yes. you are in that moment. And that right now for me is the silver lining. Absolutely, and that you're brave enough to stand up on this platform and share your story. Yeah. I think it's something we all need to be more aware of and kind of look after one another because you could be protecting somebody else just by sharing this story today. Indeed. Absolutely. Indeed. So, Melissa, from absolute trauma, here comes your triumph. Today, we would love to present you with 5,000 Rand, courtesy of Emuenza, that you can, of course, enjoy whichever and however you want. What is the first thing that you're about to purchase with this money, girl? Come on, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, firstly, I, my son is interested in an extra middle activity at school for acting. So I will be signing wow. up for that at school. And I would also like to treat, as I have three sons, I'm actually going to treat them on outing to world of birds in Clubmouth. As the lockdown wasn't being easy on them, having to stay indoors and find ways to keep them busy. Mm. Well, on Mummy Monday, that's a real <laughs> hero, Mommy, giving back. I mean, the first thing you want to do with your money is give it away. That is amazing. Yeah. Well, one more time from us here on Afternoon Express. A round of applause for Melissa. Congratulations, girl. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 
Now, South Africa, you. if you want to be just like Melissa, we want to hear from you. I mean, do you have a survival story? Let us know all about it. Share your survival story with us from surviving a failed parachute to escaping a lion attack. We really want to hear your story. Imuenza is giving away 5,000 Rand a week for five weeks. And all you have to do is to reply to the Imuenza competition post on the Afternoon Express Facebook page or Twitter page and tell us your survival story and what protected you using the hashtag Imuenza. Competition closes on the 3rd of March 2021 at midnight and terms and conditions can be found on afternoonexpress.co.za. Help support your immune system for your next big adventure with Imuenza. <laughs> and from one winner, I'm giving away something of my own today. And if you are looking for a quick and fun lunchbox idea for your little one, how does mini Cookie Monster pizza sound? Well, the best of both worlds has officially combined. Use a cookie cutter to cut those cute shapes like hearts and stars as your pizza base and then decorate with your favorite veggie toppings like Fry's original hot dogs, mini chipolatas and no meatballs. Vegan friendly, fun to make and tasty to eat. I feel like this is a winner of a recipe, Bali, because people that, are, uh, um, that don't eat meat are constantly saying, how can I make my dishes more exciting? So this is exactly what we're putting them onto. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. We're bringing Meat Free Mondays back to Afternoon Express. Do me, I'm so excited to get into this. But girl, you've got quite the challenge because I love myself some meat, but fries always delivers on flavor. That's the one thing. You know, the, the one easy part about all of this right now is that fries basically did all the work <laughs> for me. So all we need you to do today, Mama, is you're going to do the elbow grease thing as you always do. All we need is for you to mix up the batter or the dough for us for the pizza base. Mm -hmm. You've got some flour, sugar, salt, and yeast over there and some warm water to your right. And I've got all the top so you can basically go in there mama the water just obviously eyeball it go in a little bit at a time but for me the part that I need to basically make is make those mini uh, cookie monster pizzas so children like adults eat with their eyes as well so we need to make sure that the food is inviting to them that's why we've got an array of colors over here Bali. I've got some vegan uh, cheese. I've got some red and green peppers, popping of pop of color. I've got some basil, some tomato, some red pepper, olives, uh, tomato uh, puree, as well as the pizza dough that you're basically showing us how to make right now. Yeah, I'm already adding my water. I see you, girl. So that's another thing. I don't know. You you do make your pizza from scratch, right? Uh uh. uh and also, first of all, <laughs> setting up that expectation to me. Why would I make my pizzas <laughs> from scratch? I mean, uh uh, nangeke. I'm definitely the type to store by. That's why. I'm so uh, loving the fact that here you're putting me through my paces here, yeah, learning it from scratch. <laughs> so basically what you're doing there is mixing all those ingredients and once it's been proved and it's sat for a bit and it's become this type of texture, then we get going with it, right? <laughs> it's basically sat for a bit, uh, it proved, it came to this texture where as soon as you can basically move the dough around without it sticking onto the surface, then you know that your dough is ready, okay. right? So all we're going to do now is let's just say Bali's made our dough for us. It's ready. It's been sitting. <laughs> we've got our dough and I'm going to start cutting out those beautiful shapes that we're going to be using today. Mm -hmm. And like I said, kids eat with their eyes. So what better way to invite them into having a dish than using shapes and stuff that they can actually rela relate to and also use it as an educational opportunity as well. Yeah, I love that. You know, every opportunity here that we're able to take when it comes to not only entertaining our kids but making it educational as well. I, I call it edutainment essentially. Of course. We're educating them when it comes to the food <laughs> but also entertaining them with the shapes. Correct. And the best thing about this is that we're using vegan friendly ingredients. Like if you see over here, Palace, so we've got our mini chipolatas, mm. we've got hot dogs and we've got no meatballs. So if your child is a fussy eater, do not worry because we've got them covered. No one, no one will want to put these down exactly. You know, as soon as you've made them, they're basically going to want to make sure that they get their hands on them. Yeah, so pretty start, much. Yeah. <laughs> so to start it off, I've got our different shapes that I've got over here. I'm starting with the star. You can make whatever, whatever kind of um, shapes you'd like. So I've got the star here. I've got, I know it's, it's mostly for cookies and for gingerbread men, but we're going to make pizzas, you know? I Why love not? it. There's no rules here. <laughs> There's no rules, of course. And then we've got a little doggy as well. And yeah. the one thing I love as well is because we're using um, our fries products, you know that the taste is definitely there. You're not going to miss out on the taste. Mm. You know, the flavor is definitely going to be there. I mean, the hot dogs, they basically work out. For anyone that loves their hot dogs, this is basically the perfect replacement. 
yeah. it's good on the planet good on your body and good on the animals as well I'm here for that Dumi you know essentially for me what's so special about what Fry's is doing here and kind of reimagining the uh, our menus and Correct. the ingredients we use on a daily basis is the fact that they've made it so accessible for the average South African Correct. that's what I'm all about I know my mom has not eaten meat for almost for 10 years now oh, wow. a very very long time so she's essentially the person who introduced us to all things fries I think we started off with the burgers do me oh. and can I tell you those burgers were delicious I almost forgot that there was no uh, meat in it and I think that's what's so special here a lot of people think that uh, when you're looking for meal or, or, or certain replacements that it's a replacement mm -hmm. or a substitute no we're doing something completely exactly. independent and on its own here keeping it meat free so the flavor will not taste like meats don't expect it to <laughs> and even better because that's when we get to enjoy that plant-based diet to the max correct and the one thing I also love about this is it's plant-based and it's naturally cholesterol free high in fiber and it's non-GMO, mm. non meaning that it is not genetically modified, guys. We've not put anything that's not supposed to be in there. Yeah. When we say plant-based, we mean plant-based. We're not talking about those uh, meat dishes when they say it's supposed to be beef <laughs> and then it's donkey. No, we are saying, when we say, <laughs> when we say it's non-GMO, we mean that, you know? I love that. So basically, to start topping these beautiful pizzas that are going to the oven, we've got an array of ingredients here. I've started with our vegan cheese. Um, you can basically use any of these. I mean, I've got the mini hot dogs that I've got here. Love that. that. I'm just going to take out for you, Bale, just so you can see they're so versatile, you know, you could basically even use them from the packaging. You know, the one thing I love about it is that you can take it straight from the packaging mm. and you don't even have to worry because like I said, the kiddies eat with their eyes first. So you can basically go in with one little chipolata there or rather one little hot dog there, another one over there, top it with a bit more cheese on top. Also, Dumi, as I'm just grabbing this packaging, first of all, the colors pop out. I mean, this will definitely stand out in the supermarket. Market. Correct. But not only that, you're doubling up on the vegan goodness here. Correct. We've got our hot dogs that are courtesy of fries, but also the cheese that you're using it's is vegan, vegan cheese. Correct. So basically, we're staying to our plant-based uh, point. When we say that it's plant-based, we mean to, it's plant-based in its entirety, not just one part. Mm -hmm. So basically, this goes into the oven to bake for about... 10 minutes basically you want the cheese to melt once it's melted then your dish is ready and your uh, once your dough is cooked and you know that that's done this is pretty much good for a starter at a dinner party or of course if you're snacking watching your favorite movie or of course zuri hall on television you know <laughs> girl, just be snacking watching and enjoying L delicious lovely thank you for helping us this monday only a pleasure Bali. and whether you are packing lunches lunch boxes or feeding kids at home fries makes it easier to feed your kids healthier options because they are 100 percent plant-based and yummy better for your health, better for the planet, and better for all the animals. Head to fryfamilyfood.com fry to have all these recipes for mm. because they're family friendly and they're great for the entire family. Now I'm very excited, Dumi. Mm -hmm. the, you know we've been giving away money. We have. Tick, done that. <laughs> now it's an opportunity for us to give away a fun Super M hamper. So girl, we're going to be going, uh, you know, Monday M magic. Okay. That's what it is all about coming up.
find a chance to win Moolah, mobile phones and many more M prizes with Super M. Pick your M prize on your favorite Super M pack. Dial star 120 star 7837 hash and follow the prompts. The M you pick is the M you could win. All you need is M. Super M. Gap filler. Welcome back to the show on this Monday. Now it's a hashtag all you need is M kind of Monday and the first of our mystery M conundrum game. We're kicking it off with movie titles that start with the letter M and we've got two contestants on the line who will be guessing the conundrums. Now the contestants who get the most points wins the game and today's prize up for grabs is a new Metro VIP year card. Contestant number one is Utembe Lise Zamini. Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us, Timberlise. Now, are you feeling like a winner today? Yes, I am the winner. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. I love that confidence. Now, contestant number two is Melanie Naidu, all the way from my hometown, Durban. Hello, Melanie. Hi, how are you? I'm so excited that you're playing with us. Please tell me, girl, that you are as excited to be a part of the show. Absolutely excited. Now, ladies, you know, we've got our contestants locked and loaded with an eye on the prize. Contestants, let me break down the rules of the game. A mystery M conundrum will come up on the screen in which you have 30 seconds to guess the name of the movie. If you think that you know the answer, just shout out your name. And if a contestant has guessed wrong, then the other contestants will get a chance to answer. The contestants with the most right guesses or the most correct guesses wins. Are you ready, ladies? Yes, we are. Well, I'm ready yes. for you. Let's start the clock. The first conundrum for this title of a movie goes like this. Here's your hint, ladies. She's a nanny of two mischievous children. Go. Can anybody... Melanie. Yes, Melanie. Is it Nanny McPhee? Nope. So this goes to Tembelise. Tembelise, do you know who we're talking about? No. Nine, eight, seven. Still, you still have time on the clock. And the winner from upstairs is since nobody got the guess. Let's get the correct answer. Who's the answer? Mary Poppins, ladies. It's Mary Poppins. That was the name of that conundrum. But although round one went to nobody, here's this time, an uh, uh, opportunity to redeem yourselves. Question number two. Here's a clue, ladies. She's a girl disguised as a male warrior. Melanie. Yes, Melanie. Mulan. Yabba yabba! Congratulations, Melanie, with one point on the board. Okay, here comes the title of the next movie conundrum. Here's a clue. It's a musical famous for the song Dancing Queen. Melanie. Yes, Melanie. Mamma Mia. Yabba yabba yabba! It is Mamma Mia. Okay, Timberlake, are you even in the game? Melanie right now is tailing in front with two points. Timberlake, are you still there, girl? Yes, I am. Okay, let's hope that this next point we can give to you. Please may you help me with the name of this movie. Here's your clue. It's also an island country in the Indian Ocean. Melanie. Yes, Melanie. <laughs> Madagascar. Yes, it is Madagascar. I mean, Melanie, I think we should have already known when we saw your name starts with an M and it's a Monday exactly. Super M challenge. I'm telling you, girl, you're nailing it. Are you feeling confident? Absolutely. I'm loving it. I can already see the excitement. I mean, Tembeleke on your side, we have not forgotten about you, girl. How are your energies feeling right now? Are you still feeling confident, Tembeleke? Hey, my confidence is going out of the window slowly. <laughs> I, I do understand it, girl. Sometimes that's what happens. The confidence just slowly goes out. But listen, as long as you're still on Afternoon Express, you still have an opportunity to win. So here's one more clue for the next movie conundrum. It's an animation of a young spirited teen who sets sail on a daring mission to prove herself a master. Melanie! I'm a Melanie! Yes, Melanie! <laughs> Moana! 
Winner, winner, chicken dinner. I love that. Congratulations, Melanie. What a fun and exciting game of the M uh, Mega Mystery Conundrum. I'm trying to put as many M's as possible. The Mega mo Movie Conundrum. How do you feel of winning? I'm super excited. Oh, I love that. You seem to be like quite the movie guru, girlfriend. Do you have any children? Because a lot of those were also children guesses. Absolutely, I'm a proud mom of three kids. It goes without saying, girl. Trust me, you wear it with pride and it shows. Well, Tembelike, thank you so much for joining us. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. And once more, huge congratulations goes out to today's winner, Melanie. And she's going to be winning and walking away with a new Metro VIP Your Card. Now, winning is as easy as that with Super M. And we could be calling you to take part in our Mystery M Conundrum game next week. Remember, there are many more M prizes to be won, like Moolah, mobile phones, movie vouchers, and much more. With all you need is Super M competition. Now, there are seven different M prizes to be won by simply purchasing the Super M promo pack with an M prize you want to win. Enter by dialing star 120 star 7837 hash and follow the prompts. The M you pick is the M you could win and more of course if you do enter. The more chances you enter, the more chances you have at winning. So go on and find your M with Super M because hashtag all you need is M. Now I'm so excited that we are giving away so many prizes here on Afternoon Express, but I have promised you uh, a little bit of a fashion expose with Gavin Raja. So I'm looking forward to all he has to say when it comes to AFI coming up. Stand a chance to win Mula, mobile phones, and many more M prizes with Super M. Pick your M prize on your favorite Super M pack. Dial star 120 star 7837 hash and follow the prompts. The M you pick is the M you could win. All you need is M. Super M Gap Filler. Afternoon Express. Now, ladies, we'll be speaking fashion, eh? Hmm? Let's take it up a notch. Gavin Rogers, one of those rare national treasures and humanitarian, humanitarians close to the hearts of our rainbow nation. And his latest collection, showcased for Fas Africa Fashion International, is no less than absolute genius and brilliance. Let's take a look. I think reset, reinvent and reimagine is really about 
having taken the time to look back and reflect on what we've done, where we need to be, and what it's going to take for us to get to this future world of where we can be the best versions of ourselves. I think because I've had no formal training at all in fashion, I think the idea was that I was always this outsider looking into this very intriguing world. I hadn't learned any rules, so I was kind of breaking them all the time. I think one of the first things I did was learning how to work with a mannequin or a dummy. So it was really about draping fabric, putting fabric together. Till today, my studio calls me Edward Scissorhands because I'm very good at just cutting through things. For me, my collection is really about bringing a sense of strong visibility around gender-based violence and domestic violence and women who have been victims of sexual abuse. More than anything, we've seen the transformative power of what fashion can be, and we are using that hopefully to make a difference in the country. Do I really think it's, you know, we're saving the world in fashion? No, but I think that maybe we make the world a better place. I decided to create a collection which was really based on very beautiful, simple pieces with major attention to detail. I wanted to be representative of a new tribe of women who were strong, who were uncompromising in their femininity, but at the same time were in support of one another and were strong together. So I think the concept of shooting in the rain and wanting to to have this uh, feel was really kind of driven over the fact that firstly we need water. We, you know, water is a very important element for the African continent in all forms, and it's it's almost kind of quite childlike playing in the rain. I mean, there's a famous line of song, you know, "God bless the rains in Africa," and I just wanted to have that sense of rain being almost like these showers of blessing. And I think what we need now is a new sensibility of caring and loving one another. Wow, wow, wow. I feel like Gavin never disappoints ladies, especially when it comes to the fashion. That's exactly the words I had in mind, Balisa. Wow. Because that is, is such a, it's a breathtaking, like, walk runway uh, experience you know uh, just looking at it I felt like I was there I felt like I was captured actually it, it did and it was so immersive mm. we actually wanted to be it felt like you were there and he was speaking about how fashion is so powerful yeah. and transcendent and can have such deep messaging I'll never forget my very first dress that I actually saved money for was a Gavin Roger dress wow. so what's the longevity in a brand mm. and a person that's incredible girl that is all things Gavin I must say mm. 
Now, Mzansi, if you would like to check out one of Gavin Raja's incredible and breathtaking pieces from his collection, then visit AFI Boutique on www.afiboutique.com and you could be rocking one of Gavin's signature designs. Now, ladies, talking about different designs and different seasons, we are officially in autumn. Mm -hmm. So what's the one thing you want to change up this season? Uh, <laughs> sure. Yeah, Changing coating your I'm feeling, I'm feeling hats. I'm feeling that autumn is a season of hats. I'm, I'm really into rocking mm. a hat. Mm -hmm. It's good for bad hair day as well. <laughs> Mommy Monday is usually a hat day. I love that. Let's see what everyone had to say on social media. <laughs> We've got Michelle, and Michelle used that hashtag Afternoon Express by saying, this season, I just want to take care of my body. We also have Bradley Brown here who says, be positive. We also have someone here who's keeping on the same notes, I suppose I could say. Unom Vuzo says, eat healthy and look beautiful, taking care of my body. Umpo agrees. It seems like Umpo Uti invest myself in God more than ever. And our last viewer here that I would like to read out, Priscilla. Uti hashtag Afternoon Express. I would like to change into a genie and wish this COVID away. Yes. Hallelujah, girl. I must say I'm right there with you. Now, ladies, what do you think of some of those comments? We've got quite a nice range of people wanting to um, diversify and change a little bit of this and that. It's usually the sentiment you find at the beginning of the year, sure. right? It's this powerful transformational atmosphere. And mm -hmm. we're feeling it now in autumn. I think it's great. I think if anything that this pandemic has done for us is that it's make a, made us think out of the box, but also just be intentional about things that we do. So I feel like people, even though it's a re resolutions that you make at the beginning of the year, people are just following through throughout the year. So that's something that I'm really loving. And another thing that we've learned from COVID, especially last year, this time, you cannot plan for the unexpected. Mm -hmm. I mean, last year, this time, we were... Goals, plans, mm. resolutions, lists, 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 all these to-dos. But then when everything says, whoa, stand still, you kind of have to reevaluate. Mm. So I love the fact that right now a lot of people are giving themselves like three-month goals, six-month goals, playing it by ear and being flexible. So that's what it's all about. Cheers to that, ladies. Cheers <laughs> to that. <laughs> well, thank you, ladies, so much for kicking off this Monday with me here on Afternoon Express. It's always such a pleasure. And to you, Mzansi, for watching. It is always so good. But, of course, tomorrow we've got a very exciting cook-along. We've got none other than Kelly Kumalo. And, of course, she's going to be joined as well by Umon Lingobo. Very much looking forward to it. But good night from here on Afternoon Express. Every love story is beautiful. Celebrate the month of love with your family favorites. Made with love by Clover. Another feel-good production.